Career Choices. I'm your host, Elizabeth Gia. On this program, you'll meet accomplished individuals sharing their background, experience, and career path. After talking to many of our guests, we quickly realize many people don't stay on one career their whole entire life. Often, events take us onto a different road. And today's guest, Ms. Bonnie Hagerman, studied French in college and then earned a grad degree in textiles and apparel. Later, she became an assistant professor teaching textiles and apparel at Hood College in Frederick, Maryland. She eventually retired as the executive director of academic services at the same school. And while still working full time, Bonnie founded a nonprofit organization, Care Wear Volunteers Inc. The organization brings together a passion for knitting and dressing all types of patients. And after retirement, Bonnie continues to serve as the president of Care Wear Volunteers. Ms. Bonnie Hagerman, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for inviting me. So let's start with you and your education. You studied French, then textiles and apparel. Talk to me about why you chose French as your major and then why you pivoted. In my high school, back in the 1950s, there wasn't a good deal of career guidance. Mm. So I selected as a major the courses that I enjoyed the most, and it was French language classes. Mm -hmm. I arrived at Hood College for freshman orientation and immediately was handed a, a piece of paper to declare a major, and I declared French mm. without really knowing a great deal about the program. Shortly after beginning the program and, and as I enrolled in additional classes, I realized it was mainly a French literature major. Mm. My friends were enrolled in textiles and apparel classes and they were designing apparel, they were learning advanced apparel construction techniques. They were doing fun things and I was quite envious. <laughs> so I found it a little bit too late to change, this was a different degree program, mm. it was too late to change my major but I declared textiles and apparel as a minor and I went to graduate school in textiles and apparel. Nice. So then you got the best of both worlds. Exactly. And then after college, what was your first job? Well, I was unrealistic about being a fashion translator. <laughs> OK. Um, I, my first job was in a large insurance company in New York City. Mm. And I was in the French Canadian Group Insurance Division. And I translated and assembled policies, insurance policies, right. in French. OK. But it was basically cutting and pasting oh. already written paragraphs. Mm. And it was quite boring. Okay. So I returned to graduate school in textiles and apparel. I see. And then you said then you found this passion for teaching textiles and apparel. So how did your pivot happen? That wasn't my choice. <laughs> The college decided to eliminate the entire department, the majors within home economics. Mm -mm -mm. And um, as a tenured faculty member of 28 years, mm. I was offered a staff position. Okay. I had to debate whether or not I would relocate to continue teaching. Um, but my husband and I really liked Frederick, and we wanted to stay there. So I accepted the position in academic services. I'm, I'm a staunch enthusiast <laughs> for good academic advising. Yes and was happy to be part of that program. Wonderful, and during that time, you founded CareWare Volunteers, Inc.? Actually, a little bit before. I see, and why or how did you want to do that? Well, I didn't start out planning to start a nonprofit mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. I wanted a community service project that was flexible, that used my skills, that didn't have lots of regulations, quotas to complete, and I needed it to be flexible in terms of the time of year. Some of the projects I had been involved with were around Christmas, which is probably the busiest time at the end of fall semester. Mm -mm -mm. So I wanted something I could do on, in my free hours and that would use my interests in textiles and apparel. So when you started, talk to me about what was the purpose of CareWare? Well, I was interested in um, knitting and crocheting mm -hmm. um, and sewing for um, a community service project. I saw an article about a group in Ohio making hats and kimonos for preemies in their N NICU. Mm -hmm. I read the article and I thought, this sounds interesting. This mm -hmm. is something I might like to do. Yeah. I contacted the nurse manager at the 
Children's National Medical Center in Washington, D.C., nice. asked if they would like to receive these items. Mm -hmm. Preemie sized items were not readily available. Okay. So they were very anxious to receive those, those items, nice. especially hats and booties and kimonos. And um, I developed patterns, sized yes. the patterns to um, preemie sizes. Preemie is not just one size. Preemie okay. is less than five pounds. Okay. So there's very small preemies, there are large preemies, and then you know, up to full a term. A range. A whole range. So we needed a range of, of pattern sizes. We needed the sizes mm -hmm. to fit all of those babies. And the nurse manager told me to go to the supermarket and buy mm -hmm. a lime or a lemon okay. and to make the smallest hat to fit oh, this wow. size. Preemie heads are elongated and small preemies yeah. at one pound have a head size that look about oh. this size. So I did that and then I had a conversation with the nurse manager and I asked her about how many hats they could use in a month's time. Mm -hmm. My idea was perhaps with my full-time teaching that maybe I could make 30. Mm -hmm. They're small, they, they finish quickly. She answered 75 to 125 a month Wow. And by the way, could we have booties and mittens to, to go with those? <laughs> I knew at that moment that my contribution was a, a drop in the proverbial bucket. Okay. So I, at that point, decided to recruit other people to help do this. Because if I thought it was interesting, maybe others would. And that's how it, it sort of began. This was 1991? This is 1991. I had an article in the Frederick News Post, oh, nice. a full page article. They showed samples of the hats. I designed a kimono, and um, I recruited 150 people. Wonderful. So that was our start. That's a very strong start. And, and it uh, just has grown <laughs> since then. Let's get to that later, but first I see these wonderful items you brought, so thank you. Can we briefly talk about what you have here? Okay. As I mentioned, we started with hats, mm -hmm. and it was a crochet. We, had the, we have crochet patterns. We have the knitting patterns. Okay. But the hospitals began asking for other items, and those items included the medical surgical doll. Okay. Johns Hopkins gave us the pattern and explained that these are used to acquaint children with what's going to happen. Um, the physicians and nurses will actually draw on the doll and say, we're going to cut here, we're going to put bandages there. When you wake up the, after the surgery, there are no surprises. So it's, I would like that as an adult. <laughs> absolutely, I agree with that. Um, so that was added to our repertoire. Okay. Um, local hospitals asked for tote bags, and we make tote bags for children. This is nice. Children mm -hmm. bring games and toys, and their tray tables are loaded with things. The beds have phones and 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 crayons and so on. Mm -hmm. Children often fall out of bed, reaching for those things that have fallen to the floor. Mm -hmm. So all of their belongings can be put into the, the tote bag and held securely on like the bed. Like this. Exactly, just <laughs> like that. And they're, they're not falling to the floor. No. We also make tote bags for adults and I deliver see. them at the cancer center. They're beautiful. Um, carrying um, lotions and directions and um, supplies that they will bring to each session. I see. And this is a... One of the full-term hats. Full-term hat, okay. Mm -hmm. We do have requests for the newborn nursery for full-term sizes. Toys. Toys, um, oh, nice. All manner of toys to distract and to um, calm children. Mm -hmm. We distribute these to ERs. We distribute them to laboratory areas of hospitals, um, again, so that children are distracted and when they're waiting for testing. I see. They're just you know, a little more relaxed and distracted. Um, we also give these to police departments and fire departments. They keep them in the vehicles when they encounter children at accident mm. sites. And again, it's distracting. We also include blankets with these for, for a little bit of warmth. Okay. And what about this row? These are the um, preemie sizes, starting with extra small preemie, small okay. preemie, medium preemie, large preemie, extra large preemie, and full term. Wow. So that the patterns are available Beautiful. for all the sizes that a hospital might request. Okay. And then on my side, let me demonstrate some more. We had requests for burial garments. I and, see. Um, you mean like these as well? Yes. 
Okay. This is a burial gown that I designed, simple to sew. And oh, wow. um, thank you. We try to create a beautiful memory for families that are in a very tragic situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We have a boy version. Okay. I see. And then we have smaller versions for micro preemie, stillborn, oh. and um, I see. Those very, very tiny okay. infants. Got it. Thank you. This is the kimono. Okay, this is the kimono. Okay. And this is one of the larger preemie sizes, but this is unique in that it opens with Velcro in the front mm -hmm. and on the shoulders. Oh. An infant in the, in the NICU usually has lots of wires, monitors, mm -hmm. tubes, and you can't be taking them out and, and putting them back in. Mm -hmm. So this is something that can slide under the, the infant, yes. and then these can be closed very easily wow. around all the tubes and monitors. And when I first designed this, mm -hmm. my mother looked at it this is like 1990. Uh -huh. My mother looked at it and she said, oh, I wish I had that when you and your sister were young. She said, I always hated taking your arm and sort of pulling your arm back, trying to get it into the sleeves. So she liked that she design. Liked that. Wonderful. We do neck pillows, cough pillows. We do shawls for cancer patients. What is this one? This is a cancer patient shawl. Okay. And um, Beautiful. Chemotherapy often affects the blood and, and some of the patients get quite cool during mm -hmm. their treatments. And so um, providing a shawl is one, a gift mm -hmm. that many patients appreciate, but it also is very functional. Wonderful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right now, how many volunteers on average do you have? Impossible to count. Uh -huh. um, I don't have any membership fees. I don't have any registration. Um, I send out information and patterns. We have a website mm -hmm. and one of the advantages of this organization is there are no quotas, there are no re regulations. Um, there are lots and lots of volunteers. We have, we have participants across the country, in Canada. Wow. Um, there are hospitals, probably f more than 500 hospitals on our website that list the items that they request. And um, it's just been impossible to keep a, <laughs> keep a list, to keep a, a full count. In terms of the actual nature of a nonprofit, um, very quickly, is it hard to launch one versus an actual business? Well, it is a business first. Mm -hmm. You have to incorporate in the state of Maryland, okay. which involves forms and fees. And then as a corporation, you, are, um, you submit to the IRS, and that is a horrendous amount of paperwork. <laughs> I, see. I, I considered it appropriate for the Ford Foundation. Um, <laughs> I hired a lawyer okay. to, who had work experience at IRS mm. to actually file the papers. Okay. But people have succeeded in filling it out themselves, but it's quite a challenge. Okay. It's Thank a you. lot of paperwork. I see. Thank you, Bonnie. And right now, it's time to take a break. We will be coming back. Stay with us. Ms. Bonnie Hagerman and I will talk more about her nonprofit, CareWare. Up, college is hard, down, those books are heavy. My sport is football, but my passion is education. Right up here. So every year I take promising high schoolers on a college tour to show them that higher education means a brighter future. <laughs> my name is Namdi Asamoah. I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. You can be a reader, tutor, or mentor too. Take the pledge at liveunited.org slash volunteer. Do you wear this? No. Oops. Yeah. Sure. sure. Let's go. Rob, go. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. Welcome back to Career Choices. In today's program, we've invited Ms. Bonnie Hagerman to talk about her career. She's the founder of the nonprofit CareWare Volunteers, Inc. The organization brings together people who love knitting and it helps out dressing patients of all sizes. 
So as we were talking earlier, CareWare Volunteers, it's evolved since you started it in 1991. How has it changed? The focus in the beginning was knitting hats for premature babies in NICUs. Yeah. That was basically all that we did. However, over time, hospitals asked us to provide other items, and we recruited people who sewed to make kimonos, to do burial garments, to do tote bags, yeah. zippered bags, neck pillows, toys, the list goes on and on, quilts, mm. lap blankets, and so on. So we have grown dramatically in the number of items that we provide to hospitals, to mm -hmm. fire departments, to food banks, wow. to child welfare service offices, um, and we have grown in number of participants. When you launched this nonprofit, how many people were working with you as the core team? Basically, I worked by myself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I did. I did set up a board of directors okay. and selected board of uh, directors who would provide some expertise. First, we needed a website, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so I selected a, a faculty colleague who teaches in the in the department of. Com computer science. Mm. And I have a CPA, I have a physician mm -hmm. who had a practice in pediatric um, medicine, mm -hmm. and um, I have a financial, count, a financial advisor, and um, I'm trying to think of the other one. It seemed like it was the, all the very essential. The essential areas, mm -hmm, very mm -hmm. definitely. And so we have, we have just grown from, from that point um, with the expertise of the board, but I have basically worked by myself. Wow. What's the biggest challenge then of running CareWare for you? <laughs> time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When, I was, when I was employed full-time, I had to be very careful about time management. Yes. There just weren't enough hours in the day. But I also had a slow growth policy for CareWare okay. while I was working. When I retired in 2011, I was able to do some of the tasks that needed to be accomplished. And nice. one of them, for example, was a pattern booklet. Oh. We needed to have our patterns put together in a booklet format so that I could mail them out. Mm -hmm. And um, you probably don't remember Purple Ditto, but I was using an old crank machine to crank out pages oh. and would fold them together and send them out to people. Uh, this is much, <laughs> much nicer. So oh, nice. we, we assembled all of the knit, crochet, and sewing patterns in one booklet. Wow. And that booklet can be mailed okay. to anyone who requests. Wonderful. The other thing is a newsletter. I do a quarterly newsletter. Mm -hmm. And again, um, I didn't have time mm -hmm. to do a full-fledged newsletter. Yes. When I retired, I had time and um, it's beautiful. perfected my computer skills <laughs> and put together a newsletter that contains patterns People like to see pictures. They like yes. to see what other people have made. Wow. And I've also included some instruction on how to make some of the items that, that are requested by hospitals. Very nice. So talk about, in terms of resources, certainly in the beginning, um, it's probably yourself putting in the funding. Yes. And uh, then what happens? How do you fundraise or do you fundraise? My husband and I made the commitment for the first couple of years to provide, basically it was printing and postage expenses. Okay. Um, when we became a nonprofit organization as a 501c3, donations were tax deductible. Mm -mm. And um, we did receive donations. I ask, I don't do fundraising. I don't okay. call, we don't have telephone anyone. Mm -hmm. We don't send mailing address labels. We don't send keychains. Um, in each newsletter is a paragraph requesting donations from anyone who is able to make a donation. Nice. And we have succeeded very well over the years on those donations. That's nice. And you tell me that these are volunteers all over the country and even up in Canada? Correct. Mm -hmm. What do you think are some of the most important skills that helped you along the way to grow CareWare? Careware? Probably time management, mm -hmm. organizational skills. I am an organized person. And I think that keeping all of the careware information, um, the file, the computer, yeah. in my office while, while I was a full-time instructor um, did require some, some careful planning. Delegating, um, I've, I've also 
learned to delegate anything mm -hmm. that I could possibly delegate or work with people. Yes. And I have tried to learn computer skills as rapidly as I possibly can. Um, certainly make me more efficient. Very good. And so uh, this is such a wonderful, all these things, knitted items. What is the most satisfying part about running this nonprofit for you? I guess the fact that we are really helping patient care. Um, neck pillows help to support patients after surgery. Mm -hmm. um, the, the hats keep the heads warm. They do have a function. They keep heads warm. Mittens and booties keep the extremities warm. Um, we also add cheer and a little bit of, of caring feeling to um, patients who may be somewhat depressed. Mm -hmm. um, chemotherapy is not pleasant. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a gift of a tote bag or a zippered bag to a patient brings a smile. And that's very rewarding. Nice. Anything you'd like to share that you don't like or least like about running CareWare? <laughs> Accounting and preparing for an annual audit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> they're not creative and they're not fun. Okay. <laughs> the administrative portions are Yes, mm -hmm. keeping, keeping everything in order. I, I mean, see. the newsletter and the pattern book and the correspondence, mm -hmm. helping people with patterns, um, delivering wonderful items, all of those are fun. Nice. Uh, QuickBooks and audit, audit preparation aren't really mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to share? I see in your uh, newsletter some really nice photos of probably your knitters. Uh, any memorable stories you'd like to share in the hospital or any any moment that stands well, out? Well, I was in an, an NICU and I was able to hold a preemie baby mm. and the baby weighed one pound. My ketchup weighs more than one pound. Mm -hmm. I purchased it at Costco mm -hmm. and it's this large ketchup, but okay. um, I was just amazed at the technology that's available to help patients such as nine ounce, 12 ounce, one pound babies. Um, nice. that's, that's very rewarding and it's just a marvel that um, we can do something. We can provide hats, we can provide kimonos. Um, sometimes in, in the um, NICUs, our quilts are put over the isolates to darken the space mm -hmm. so that those babies will sleep better. Nice. Um, we're helping. Very good, and who taught you to knit? My aunt. <laughs> Okay, and so that was just through show and tell? Mm -hmm. No mm -hmm. books at that time? And no internet or internet. YouTube for instruction. Um, yes, she sat down with me and she showed me how to knit. Um, another aunt helped me with sewing and um, I can see why I was interested in textiles and apparel because it was in the family. In terms of the success of CareWare, what do you think helped you the most in growing? And it seemed like the demand was already th there. So, well, probably finding the right, finding a niche for people. I've had people say, "I love to crochet, but my family will tell me no more Afghans. Don't crochet <laughs> anything else. We have plenty of them." Mm -hmm. um, I can identify with that because my family tells me. We have lots of zippered bags, don't make any more. I love making zippered bags. This project, this organization, allows people to continue doing something they love to do and feel productive, and they're doing community service as well. For people who are watching this who may not know, how popular or how strong is the knitting community? It's growing stronger and stronger each year. Mm -hmm. um, some of the um, stores now are teaching classes and um, yarn stores are, are teaching instruction for children beginning at very young ages. So it has a resurgence. And I think there is a festival, a knitting festival. Can you talk about that? There's a fiber fest, which is <laughs> um, a collection of vendors who um, come together at the fairgrounds, Frederick Fairgrounds, and oh, I, I think see. it was not too long ago in Frederick. Okay. And the, the, well, the supplies available to knitters and crocheters are absolutely beautiful and much more, much lovelier than they were years ago when you know, I learned to knit. I see. Things were rather basic. Okay. So for those who are watching who may enjoy knitting or who want to explore running or starting their own nonprofit, 
what would you tell them? One, I would suggest some caution. Mm. Setting up a one-person nonprofit organization with a very narrow focus generally does not have a long lifespan. Okay. Um, there usually aren't people to take over those one-person nonprofits, and there probably aren't going to be people who are interested in that very narrow focus as well. It's usually a personal issue related to a family member, something on that line. So I think that you have to develop nonprofits that have a broad focus to reach a large number of people and serve large numbers of people in the community. Mm, wonderful. And it seems like, can you just quickly tell me, when you launched CareWare, do you remember who were your first volunteers? Who were they? They were people in the Frederick community. Um, they responded to the advertisement in the Frederick News, in the Frederick News Post. Mm -hmm. And um, some of them are still participants in, in CareWare volunteers. That's legacy. That's wonderful. And they love doing, they love knitting, they love sewing, they love crocheting, and they're happy to be able to donate those items to the local hospital. Hmm. I saw you knit just recently, <laughs> before the show, actually. How fast can you do it? <laughs> I'm not a fast knitter. Okay. <laughs> I'm an extremely slow knitter, but I keep a tote bag with the knitting. If I'm waiting in an office, I'm, I'm waiting as I was earlier in the evening, um, I pull out the knitting and um, I feel productive. And I'm making chemo hats. I make soft, um, soft yarn fabric, uh, soft yarn um, fiber contents mm -hmm. and deliver them to the local chemo center. And then everyone can learn more about CareWare Inc. Yes, so. we have a website, careware.org. Wonderful. Great. Well, thank you so much, Bonnie. Thank you for having me. It's time to wrap up, and we really appreciate our guest, Ms. Bonnie Hagerman, for sharing her experience and accomplishments. Thank you for joining us, too, and hope that her stories inspire and encourage you to explore different career choices and to make an impact in our community. If you have feedback or comments, or if you would like to share your experience, please email us at qip.career.choices at gmail.com. We'll see you next time on Career Choices. Mm -hmm.